music really did change my world. So how does music bring that change in us? I guess this differs from person to person, and for me, it was how rap music touched my life. And this is my story. A little more than 20 years ago, my mother made a very bold decision, a decision that changed her life and the lives of her children forever. I have uh, been very open about my life and every time I share it, I do it in good faith. My mother was the second wife of my father and uh, my father had three wives and he had 13 children in total. Yeah, that's an entire football team with extra enough players. But that's nothing compared to one of my friend's father who had more than 20 children. My friend still does not know how many wives in total his father exactly had. <laughs> but that's a thing from the past when we had a golden time. People were very productive and talented besides being very, very fertile back then. These days, uh, it's very difficult to handle even a single relationship, but as I said, it's a thing from the past. In some places, there was cool for women to have two or more husbands at the same time. <laughs> this practice had a lot of benefits. I know where you're getting, but by benefits, I mean economic benefits. <laughs> One would look after the animals, the other would work in the field, and another would do household chores. So, this sort of benefits this practice had. However, in my case, uh, my mother and her children were living in a remote village in Bhutan where life was too difficult while my father with the rest of our big family lived far from us in a much more developed place called Dewatha. And eventually, life became too difficult for us and that's when my mother decided to move to Dewatha where my father was. When I was in the village, as a young kid, I used to hear so many stories about the great things in Dewatang. So when I finally got to be there in Dewatang for real, it was like a dream come true moment for me. I felt like I was in New York City or Tokyo. <laughs> I saw electric bulbs and vehicles for the first time. I had my eyes on the road for hours just gazing at the trucks and the cars and the scooters. And I had to be called to have meals. And even if I missed, I would not have cared. I was that excited in the beginning. And all the houses in the town looked the same. I had never seen concrete buildings when I was in the village. So it looked the same. And once I went out on my own and could not find my way back, I was lost. I told you, it was like New York City for me. But nothing excited and surprised me more than the television. I always wondered where on earth those tiny people in the boxes lived. But life is complicated. So my mother got a divorce from my father and that's when it became even more difficult. We were very poor. My mom always bought grocery on credit. She had no one supporting her and her only source of income was weaving and that's what she did all the time. But somehow she used to manage and to this day I still wonder how she did it. I would normally miss my first few days in school because my old uniform and my shoes would be worn out. I was ashamed every time my teachers reminded me on submitting my school fees. It was less than a dollar, but I didn't have it. I was sad, I felt deprived, I felt ignored. And I was Frustrated at the same time because I thought I did not deserve to suffer that way. I was depressed. I had to turn to my friends for comfort and distraction. I never showed it outside, but in the inside I cried for years. And I felt so, so lonely. And when circumstances are like this, we become very vulnerable. But perhaps in my case, the stars were, more on, stars were on my side. One fine day I was at a friend's place and I saw a music video of Eminem. The song was Lose Yourself. I can't explain how I felt, but it was like, love it, the first sound. His, I was like, oh my God, what's that? His 
talking so fast, la 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 la, he's moving his hand, his body was moving, and even my body was also moving. <laughs> I didn't even understand what he was saying, but I fell in love with what he was doing. At one point, I thought of taking my friend's DVD, but that was not going to help. You know why? Because it didn't have TV at home. I thought you would laugh here, by the way. Anyways, it's okay. <laughs> So after that, I started looking for Eminem song, songs, and uh, I got my hands on one of his albums, The Eminem Show. And fortunately, I had a cassette player at home. And I, after that, I listened to the album over and over in my player. And gradually, I came to know about Eminem's life, and I learned that he also had a difficult childhood. His parents were also separated. So I, I thought I was just like him. And then I also thought that you know, I could also make something out of my life just as Eminem did. So I was inspired. I could relate to what he said in his song and whatever he was saying, I thought and felt as if it was like my own story. So Eminem was making me feel better. He was, Eminem did not even know I existed, but he was making a difference in my life. So that was the first time I experienced the power of music. By the way, I don't mean to say that Eminem knows me now. <laughs> and this was happening sometime in 2006, when I was in my 10th grade in middle secondary. I was 16 years old. After having listened to Eminem's song over and over, I had memorized a few lines from his uh, one or two songs and I would say those lines in my class, in front of my <coughs> friends. And since Bhutan was very new to hip hop at that time, we didn't have anyone doing that, so I was the only one rapping, although I was just, you know, just blindly saying one or two lines from the songs. My friends found it really cool, and I was starting to get attention, and I liked that. And that's what encouraged me to continue. At the same time, when I was in my middle secondary schooling, I was becoming a spiritual person because uh, in our middle secondary, we are taught a Buddhist text called The Ways of a Bodhisattva, an Enlightened Being. I was moved by the wisdom in the text. I had started to read prayers every day. I stopped a lot of my bad habits and I started reflecting on my thoughts and my actions, I was becoming a better young man. And like many other friends, I would uh, work during my vacations, which would be mostly manual work. I worked in the construction of a number of roads, bridges, drains, and walls in so many places. We used to get about $60 a month. And with that money, I also used to buy wrapped albums. And so by the time I got to higher secondary school, I had learned more songs by Eminem and I started performing them on stage. Of course, at that time, it was without music, it was just my voice. But still at that time, I was still the only one rapping. So that drew even more attention to me. It went to the extent of being nicknamed Rap. I did not like my childhood nickname much. I don't understand why I had to be nicknamed after a vegetable. It was Ozon, which means yam in my mother tongue. <laughs> so after I got the new name, every time my childhood friends called me Ozon, I would say, hey, don't call me that anymore. My name is Rap. <laughs> I felt good that way and uh, not like a vegetable anymore. <laughs> I got the opportunity to pursue my higher education in Sherpte College under the Royal University of Bhutan. I went to college in 2009. I was 19 years old. Before getting to college, the only time I saw internet was when I applied for college. And when I got there, finally I had access to internet. So the first thing I did was open my, I create my email address. I created a Facebook account and became officially an iCitizen. I also downloaded so many more rap songs, but most important of all, I downloaded a lot of free beats. 
And that's when I started composing my own songs and I started performing with beats. And in the second year, I formed a group called the Charity Rockers. We decided to record an album. And to make the story short, we released an album in 2011. I had three songs in the album, and all the money that we earned from the album was, was donated to charity. When I saw that people in me were going to benefit from my album, the feeling was very, very fulfilling. As a kid myself, I had my own share of hardships and I saw so many other people go through struggle because of poverty and so many other reasons. And from a very young age, I thought that when I grow up and I dreamt, when I grow up, I would try my best to help as many people as I can and try not to let anyone go through what I went through. And I saw music making that dream come true. So that was the second-hand experience of the power of music. And after that, I started doing a lot of uh, uh, fundraising shows for charity. I specifically remember one fundraising show we did for a school for uh, special kids. We raised less than 100,000 Viltrum, which is uh, like uh, $2,000. But the feeling I got by knowing that our music was going to benefit those ki kids was priceless. I cannot explain how exactly I felt, but at that moment, I thought, I think that was the moment for me when I thought, yeah, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And that's exactly what I've been trying to do ever since. But charity begins at home. So first I have to get a job because I need to support my own family. Although there's not much one can do when half of your salary goes in the house rent, I've paid my dues and my mom does not have to weave any longer to make a living. I try my best to spend my resources and time in the best possible ways. So after office and uh, during my weekends, I'm with young boys and girls doing social service and brainstorming ideas to bring change into society. I'm also working with a number of civil society organizations and I'm getting guidance from Buddhist masters. I'm just trying to give back to the country that has given me so much. There are a number of things that I cannot name and list about the beautiful things in my country which I appreciate and cherish a lot. But at the same time, I also want to do a number of things in order to make my country a better place. So I started talking about the things I wanted to do for my country and the people in my songs. So I talk about love and compassion, harmony, unity, equity, and justice. I talk about taking responsibility. I even talk about why is it important for people to vote. I talk about patriotism. I talk about corruption, youth issues, and I share my own story. And these come very easily to me because I mean it and I live by it. I have never written to inspire anyone. It has never been my intention to please or bring harm to no person. I write for the sole purpose of expressing myself and this has not changed. But my music has been touching hearts and relating to people in ways I could never imagine. And coming to know about this has been such a very humbling and amazing experience for me. I would like to share a few of them. Recently, a group of Bhutanese hip-hop dancers called the Droop Dream Team opened a dance studio and they named it after one of my songs. The name Gokup means chance. 
and this song, this is one of my songs. The team also organizes an annual hip hop dance competition in which dancers from all over Bhutan and abroad participate and then they also named the event as Gokup, which is after my song. And in, 2000, and in 2016, I went on my first ever nationwide tour with which I became the first ever Bhutanese artist to tour the country. During the tour, I met with the most, uh, most kind young people who told me that they were inspired by me and that listening to my songs made them feel better and work harder in life. So this was a really humbling experience for me. I have invested more in making music than I ever earned from it. In fact, I don't earn at all from music. Not many musicians in Bhutan earn. But when I look at the impact my music has been making on my listeners, I feel nothing is wasted. It feels like just yesterday, I moved from my bamboo house in the village to Dewatan. I fell down a number of times, but I stood back up and I kept moving no matter what. And today I'm here in Mongolia, sharing my story, enjoying this beautiful country and warm hospitality. If it wasn't for music, I wouldn't even be here. So I guess this really is the power of music. So, as long as music speaks to your heart, it doesn't matter whether you're listening to Jay-Z or Don Williams or Taylor Swift or Justin Bieber. It's just that for me, if it wasn't for music, it would not be, I wouldn't be even here. So, I would like to thank IRI for giving me this big, big opportunity to share my experience. Thank you so much for believing in me. And ladies and gentlemen, my dear lead fellows, young leaders from across the world, when I look at you, I feel very humbled, very honored and inspired by knowing the great things that you have done. Together, I don't see anything that we cannot do. So let us work together and make our world a better place. Thank you.